Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are going to be checking out all the either re-sculpts or brand new miniatures for the Tyranids. We're going to be looking at the Neurolictor, we're going to be looking at the Death Leaper, the, we're going to be looking at the Lictor, yes it comes with a box of one, we're going to be looking at the Biovore Piovore mix, we're going to be looking at all the Gene Stealers, and we're going to be looking at the Hormigons. And lastly, we're going to be looking at this new big beastie, the Norn Emissary or Norn Assimilator. And checking out what your options are, what magnetization options you might have, and any issues that you might want to think about when you're assembling them yourself. <laughs> This is the new Lictor, and it's come a long way since this 1995 version. First pick I took from the 40k Lexicanum site. It's sitting on a 50mm base, and there are no weapon or gear options, but it does have a variety of ways of being built, so each one can be unique. And the different parts of the different assembly options can be swapped. I currently have the stance of the pink variant with the head of the green variant and the midarms of the blue variant. I love the look of this model. It was fun to build. This is a brand new psychic version of the Lictor that the Imperium now calls the Neuro Lictor. There is only one way to build this model, and you use all of its pieces in building it. I found that the tail was a little heavy, and because you have to be so exact in keeping the tail piece together, I personally was letting it glue upside down just to help gravity along, but so that it looks like one continuous tail, you will have to have more care assembling it. Also, you may want to check out my video that I'll add in the description for filling gaps and mold lines like this, because this guy is going to have one. I personally bonded it together with layers of gently applied super thin plastic glue to remove the join line as much as possible, but I think I'll end up also applying a plastic putty to it and sanding that down to smooth before and maybe after I prime it. This is the newly sculpted Biovore, much more spider-like than its previous variants, and it now sits on an 80mm round base. The legs of the Biovore can be assembled in a couple of different ways, and it can alternatively be built as a Pyrovore, with magnetization of the Pyrovore and Pyrovore sections being a simple 3 magnet operation, best done before the model is assembled of course, though as you can see you could even do it after. The Biovore kit comes with three spore mines, which you'll want when using the Biovore, but you can also take them as their own unit if you're using the Pyrovore instead. And they are nasty little things that your opponent will struggle to ignore, even when he really doesn't want to waste his bullets on them. This is a gene stealer of the previous generation of gene stealers to give you a little idea of how they changed. First of all, they're on a 32mm base now, not the 25mm base like this older one has. Second, though this might be showing it a little too much, they have grown a little in size. Not so much so that you couldn't use the older Gene Stealer models, but they are slightly bigger. And there are 24 heads to choose from for this 10 model unit, and 10 of those heads are Cthulhu faced heads, which is exactly what I chose to use for every single one of these guys. Now the back arms are attached to the leg pieces, so they can't be changed up very well for customization. But the forearms, even though the guide does suggest them toward a particular body and you do have an insert piece that would have to be clipped off, you could technically put any of the arms on any of the bodies. You can mostly put any of the heads on any of the bodies as well. I think with a little extra plastic glue it will go on just fine, though they do have suggestions for each gene stealer body uh, with a couple of different heads. Also, the train pieces some of the gene stealers are standing on are not particularly optional because the toes of the feet touching the terrain are attached to the terrain as a single piece and not attached to the foot of the gene stealer. But I like these new gene stealers. I think they look dashing. And speaking of dashing, this new sculpt of the Death Leaper is so good looking, I feel sorry for the previous version of him. Mm. This is quite the upgrade in appearance, and I don't think you could convince me otherwise. 
so there are no options to choose from, only one way to build him, and you use every piece in the kit. You want to pay close attention to the assembly guide for this one and also do a fair bit of dry fitting so you know how the pieces fit together before you glue them. But they do fit really well together, so once you find where it goes, you'll know. Also, there are many fragile pieces here, so make sure you place your finger against the piece you're cutting off outside of the reach of the clippers so that it absorbs the shock of the cut or there's potentially going to be a break. You can keep his head and arms all separate if you want to sub-assemble him for painting and he is also completely separate from his base. For appearance, probably my favorite model amongst them all. This is the Norn Emissary and she has a 100mm base and a very cool looking terrain piece but to show her to the scale of the older generation jean stealer I have nearby and to show you how you can build both variants for magnetization, I had to leave her off her base for now. So, the Norn Emissary can also be built into the Norn Assimilator, which like the Pyro 4 and Biro 4 have two separate data sheets with two separate sets of rules. The Norn Emissary has massive scything talons that functionally are the same as the Norn Assimilator, but she would build them with an additional joint for the Emissary. But because they're the same weapon, if you're going to magnetize them, you could just choose the talents that you prefer the look of and keep them there without having to magnetize the two. The emissary also wields, however, monstrous rending claws, and those are these smaller arms at her sides, which are a separate thing entirely from the Norn Assimilator's middle arms. So you would want to magnetize these, but that shouldn't be an issue for even a fairly new magnetizer. For the head, they are completely separate pieces, so you can swap heads between them placing this shell piece that similar hairs on top where it sits without support. You would want to magnetize the heads, likely using a couple of sprue pieces across the gap within the neck and gluing a magnet to them and the same within the hollow of each head. The other difference is that the assimilator has these weird looking spines sticking out of his chest, which I guess could be his harpoon, but since he already has a different set of mid arms and these guys are bound to get broken in time and they just look creepy to me. I'm going to leave them off entirely, particularly since I'm building the Norn Emissary now. But even if I intended to magnetize the model, leaving them off would eliminate a pain in the butt magnetization problem. Unless you use very tiny magnets, but I'm still not doing it. I really like the look of this model too, though, I have to say. And my favorite, of course, is the Norn Emissary. She is my queen. She looks like a queen from the aliens movies that's why i'm going to be calling her the queen and the assimilator the king feel free to join me because that's what's in my mind from now on lastly we have the re-sculpted hormigons which are far less likely to fall over than their older counterparts but if you don't center mass them on their new 28 millimeter bases you may find they haven't quite improved as much as one may like i personally am going to be adding rocks to the bases because I'm going with the jungle scene, but the norm is a penny or a washer under their bases to keep them bottom heavy. I love the new dynamic poses of these guys, and though their bodies can only be built one way since the smaller arms are attached to their leg pieces, though their t big talons with some clipping could be applied to any of the bodies, they have more than enough heads to choose from as well, with a little extra glue could go on any of the bodies, and besides Mr. Yippy Gaunt and Mr. Figure Skater Gaunt, I think you wouldn't be able to tell any doubles apart when you get more than one box of these anyway. And the Ripper Swarm that is inside this kit is not push fit. None of these models have been push fit. Each of the Rippers on the Ripper Swarm are completely separate from one another, so you can assemble it on the base as you like. The Ripper Swarms are now available. They're now a little more expensive points wise to use, but they now come in units of one, two, or three. So just this little one, you could add him as a single unit now. So Games Workshop gave me these early, but they should now be available for pre-order online, or you can get them at your local hobby shop. Of course, if you're looking at this video when it's put out and there were no caps for us retailers, for these miniatures so hopefully you'll be able to absolutely get every one that you want uh, as long as as long as your local game store ordered enough for everyone because I feel like there's been a bit of demand for these 
I hope you have a fantastic day. Make certain to like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more things like this and I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Hello you wonderful patrons and YouTube members out there. Thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate everything that you have given to help the channel grow and thrive. I hope you're having a fantastic hobby time. If I were a gene stealer cultist, what would Psycho look like? And should I do that for my thumbnail? Or maybe eviler. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>